Welcome to Thermal Care. I'm Michelle. Today we're talking about low GWP refrigerants and updates in the industry that are affecting everybody. And with me today is a man who knows more about your chillers and the refrigerants than you will ever need to know with almost 20 years in the chiller industry. He's Director of Product Management for Thermal Care, Mike Shoup. Hey, Mike. Hey, Michelle. Happy to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Well, thank you. Okay, first off, what is GWP? And more importantly, how does it pertain to everyone's chillers? Well, GWP stands for Global Warming Potential. And it represents a gas's ability to trap solar radiation or energy from the sun inside the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is the baseline for the GWP rating system, so CO2 has a GWP rating of 1. And if we're looking at another greenhouse gas, like uh, propane, for example, which has GWP rating of 3, then it traps three times the amount of energy that CO2 would. Here on this chart, we can see the ultra-low GWP refrigerants in CO2 and propane that we just talked about, all the way on the left. And then way on the right, we can see the refrigerants that are commonly used in chillers like R134A, R407C, and R410A with GWP ratings in the thousands. Wow. As you can see, that R410A is essentially 2,000 times worse than CO2. So, yes, it makes sense why these higher GWP refrigerants have been delisted. Okay. So the new rules and regulations, Mike, tell us more about those. Who all is affected and how quickly is that going to happen? Well, everyone's going to be affected. And I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about how these regulations came to be. But the bottom line is that by 2026, all chillers will need to be below 700 GWP. That is pretty fast. It's very fast. And in fact, at the beginning of 2024, there were 12 states that already required you to use low GWP refrigerants in your chillers. All right, so if I'm not in one of those 12 states, let's say I'm in Florida or Texas, can I relax or should I start planning? Well, you'd have a little bit more time, but there was something else that happened at the beginning of 2024, and that's that there was a 40% reduction in the amount of high GWP refrigerants that was allowed to be produced. And that reduction in the supply is going to equal higher prices. Mm -hmm. So we may see some customers who switch earlier than they have to just to take advantage of that cost savings. That's smart. I mean, that's makes sense. It's just basic supply and demand. But the part that might not make sense and can be confusing is all the rest of the regulations. So can you go into that? Absolutely. The regulations are very confusing and there's some conflicting information out there. And obviously we don't expect anyone to be an expert in GWP ratings or their state's refrigerant requirements. So if you have questions and you're not sure, reach out to us at Thermal Care and we'd be happy to help guide you. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's get into some of the refrigerants and some of the properties that we're going to see. Absolutely. There's always a catch, and this is no exception. The new refrigerants have a different flammability rating. They are listed as A2Ls or mildly flammable. And because of this, uh, local building codes or municipality codes may require extra protection. They may even prohibit installation. I just threw another acronym into an already confusing amount of information, so I find the best way to explain something is just to show it. Here we have a video of an A3 or a highly flammable refrigerant. And if you have a propane grill at home, then you're not very surprised that it lights up very easily. And now let's look at an A2L or a slightly flammable refrigerant in R454B. As you can see, it's not very easy to light, probably wouldn't make a very good grill, and not quite as flammable as the name leads you to believe. Okay, so we have slightly flammable. Is there anything to be concerned about? No, there's no other concerns with these products. Uh, they're all non-toxic, so no worries there. Okay, great. Um, do us a favor, Mike. Go back in history a little bit and uh, tell us how Thermal Care got to this point. Like, how did you plan ahead? Yeah, well, we saw the writing on the wall, and we knew these, these regulations were coming, and we knew we had to make the best choice for our customers and for our products. And what we decided to do was take all of our R410A products and transition them to R454B and take all of our R134A products and transition them to R513A. To do this, we had to change our compressors, we had to change our evaporators, we even had to change a couple suppliers. But if we hadn't put in all that work ahead of time, we would not have been ready to ship products into those 12 states at the beginning of 2024. Wow, that is impressive. And tell us, what did you learn along the way? We learned a lot. 
Uh, but if you take anything away from today, it's that Thermal Care has switched all their products to R454B and R513A. You do not need to be concerned about toxicity, but you do need to be concerned about skyrocketing refrigerant prices. So the best thing to do is to plan ahead and reach out to the experts at Thermal Care, and we can help guide you through. Okay, super. Well, speaking of uh, asking questions, I've just got a few more for you, Mike, before we wrap up. Um, tell me, uh, how do these new refrigerants affect the efficiency of the chillers? Well, the new refrigerants aren't going to have much effect on efficiency. If you're looking to save energy, then switching to one of our variable speed drive chillers would be a much better option. Running a VFD at 50% demand can save almost 40% more energy than on-off control. Wow, I love that. I mean, at first it seems counterintuitive, but in reality that's very impressive. And tell us, what else does Thermal Care have as far as energy efficiencies? Well, if you really want to maximize your energy savings, then our oil-free turbo core chillers with the falling film evaporator have some of the highest efficiency numbers on the market. It's really the Ferrari of chillers. What could be better than that? <laughs> There's only one way you could save more energy than that, and that's to turn your chiller off altogether. And the way that you do that is with one of our free cooling systems. So if you're interested in any of these great energy saving ideas, please reach out to us at Thermal Care. We'd be happy to provide you with more information. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mike, for all your insights. You know, with the 50 plus industries that benefit from Thermal Care, I hope that you can see how your organization can also benefit from just talking with Thermal Care. So reach out and let the advantages that we've gained also be your advantage. Get ahead of the game by contacting Thermal Care.